Hi everyone, Charlie Delto here, back with another lecture in our series on epistemology and philosophy. Now we're at the lecture on fundamental uh, foundationalism versus coherentism, all right? I said at the end of our last lecture, I'll say it again now, this one's super important. This one's going to come back when we get to crime way down the end, but this is important. So we agree that the justification of our beliefs is hard, and that it, either there doesn't seem to be a good answer, or there are many good answers, but they're all a bit flawed. Let's get away from the justification and back towards a bit about beliefs, right? And the beliefs is the easy bit. Uh, it might be noted that some of our beliefs stand on their own, while other beliefs require the presence of a previous belief. So what we're talking about here is logic, right? Something that follows from something else, logically. Now, remember I told you that there are certain well-worn paths in philosophy that you should know so that you can appear knowledgeable about philosophy when the time comes? Here's one of the most well-worn paths, all right? All men are mortal. Socrates is a man. Therefore, Socrates is mortal. Remember that. That's the statement about logic. Again, I think it's from Aristotle. What we're saying is if we know Socrates is a man, if we know that all men are mortal, then we must know, it must necessarily follow that Socrates is mortal. Another way of saying it, if we know that males have a Y chromosome, we know that Derek is male, therefore we know that Derek has a Y chromosome. This last belief is based on two earlier beliefs. This particular logic, by the way, is called deductive knowledge. It must be true, it can't be wrong. There is also inductive knowledge, in which we make a loose conclusion that's very likely but not necessarily exactly true. So. We know that males like football. We know that Derek is a male. Therefore, Derek probably likes football, but it doesn't necessarily hold. But what justifies these first two beliefs? Do all males have a Y chromosome? Why? Science. Is Derek a male? Why? We asked him observation when he spoke to his doctor. We, if we have something that justifies the first two beliefs, then we can build other beliefs on them all. Perhaps all beliefs everywhere are just enormous chains that go back forever. For example, like, I'm not going to, but let's say I might, I, I'm going to make a proposition that I will buy my wife a diamond tomorrow. Why? Well, it is her birthday soon, or Christmas is coming up, and she likes diamonds, so I'm going to go get her one. Why? We've always got each other stuff for birthdays or Christmas, and so I will again. Why? Because of habit. I don't want to break the habit. And I think she'll get mad if I do, and I'd be better if she was happy. Why? Uh, because when she's uh, unhappy, she can make my life. And it just keeps going, like, all the way back. And there's just chains of beliefs. And if you keep asking why, you never get to the beginning one. And that's a real problem. It can be that some beliefs, like, go infinitely back to nothing. But it can also be that they can be circular. So, for example, if I say... Um, Gary will have a beer if David wants to. David will have a beer if Sally wants to. Sally will have a beer if Georgia wants to. Georgia will have a beer if Gary wants to. Gary will have a beer if David wants to. And it just goes round and round again. And I suppose that they'll end up getting a beer, but none of them really wants to. And there's no categorical justification that David, Sally, Gary, or Georgia wants to have a beer. And it's a circular argument. And circular arguments don't work. It's a very famous circular argument unfortunately, very famous circular argument that comes up in Rene Descartes when we get there. So the circular justification doesn't work either. Our salvation seems to lie in the possibility that one of our beliefs will stand on its own forever and that all others can stand on them, right? Ready for an exhaustive list. I don't know if this is exhaustive, but almost all the foundational beliefs that exist, ready? God exists. And can you even know that? can't even really know that God exists. But there's a lot of people on the face of the earth that build everything that they think they know on the idea that God exists. But we don't really know that. Mm. I exist. Now that's a good one. I exist is, I think therefore I am, the cogito. I exist. That's a good foundational belief. I can't deny that I exist. So therefore that does seem to be one. And then there are things like maths. One plus one equals two. It's a pretty good belief. Geometry, things like that, time and space, cause and effect, these sort of mathematical things, they seem to be foundational beliefs. You can see now why the early tribes saying, God did it, was such a get out of jail free card for everyone. It gave someone 
a foundational belief. So that's foundationalism. It's just so important to epistemology because everything we talk about has to be derived from a truth. And if you can get one truth, just one, perhaps you can build on that logically. So let's get to coherentism now. And this, this is from Quine, who we're going to get to in a, in a much later lecture. He, he was around in the 1950s and 60s. What if instead of there being big linear lines of belief that were either infinite, circular, or landed on a foundation of truth, but what if there was a web of beliefs that was sprawling and seemed to support each other as a whole? The thing about a web and why that analogy was used is that each strand supports all the rest, and there is no... Like you can cut any one strand and the thing doesn't fall down. You can probably cut two or three strands and the web doesn't fall down. Everything supports everything else. And so long as you have like at least seven or eight or nine or ten strands of this web still attached to whatever it's attached to, the whole structure will remain and you can run around and repair the rest of them. And some people believe that this is how our knowledge exists, that there is no one truth, but we believe a great many things and they all hold each other up. So the socialists managed to ignore the fact that socialism's always failed and killed millions and millions and millions of people. Are they stupid? No, they're not. It's just that one of their big major strands that holds their whole web together is that socialism is good and they're not prepared to cut it, even though maybe they should, because they don't want to have to do the repair work on the rest of their web or their, their um, framework of beliefs. And then capitalists seem to completely ignore the fact that there's massive income inequality and that's bad and there's no human dignity in not being able to live in a home when you've got someone that owns 50 pairs of shoes and you could buy a home with just their shoes but they won't give you any money and they say that you're lazy but you're not. And capitalists seem to be able to look over this very easily. Why? Well, because one of their major threads in their web of beliefs is that capitalism is good and they're not prepared to tear that down because it supports so much of what they happen to believe. I think that a lot of right-wing people will just completely ignore good science on carbon emissions just so they don't have to create big government and strict regulatory processes, which is something that right-wing people generally don't believe in. Some feminists will ignore the fact that there's staggering differences between men and women and they're predictable and they seem to say, well, we should treat men and women equally, even though sometimes they don't seem to treat men and women equally themselves. And so we have all these contradictions in our lives and it's not because we're stupid it's because to stay sane to be human at all we had to have some knowledge and some beliefs and so what we did was cr we created this web of belief most of it comes from our parents so much of it comes from our culture some of it contradicts each other piece but the web is the best we've got without a web we just fall into nihilism and perhaps every human in the world has a subtly different web and perhaps those people with kind of similar webs or similar frameworks of belief gathered together and become something like the far left community in Oregon, in Portland, or something like them with a different sort of web of beliefs become something like, I don't know, punk rock guys that travel around or back this London back in the 70s and pierce their nose with safety pins. Is that what they did? Anyway, got mohawks, who knows? Maybe that's why we come together and this this idea this destiny that we're going to have one truth that unifies the whole people so there will be only peace and no wars perhaps that doesn't ever it can't ever work or perhaps we just have to wait until each human being cuts the major threads in their web that is wrong and builds the new one and we all end up with webs that are something similar but nevertheless under coherentism there is no foundational truth we just have to build our own webs right i hope that made sense the coherentism foundationalism thinks extremely important. In our next lecture, we're going to get into uh, each of the philosophers starting from Plato, all right? We'll probably just proceed Plato with a bit about the ancient Greeks, but Plato, Aristotle, and on down. So uh, I'll see you in these next lectures, and um, I look forward to seeing you then.